All right, today we're going to talk about logic statements. Now, um, logic statements kind of go hand in hand with proving stuff. And um, one of the trickiest things in geometry isn't necessarily the math involved, but it's being able to visualize problems and justify certain rules. All right, so um, this is kind of an intro. Not much of this is on the EOC, but again, I think it's, a, it's an important skill to understand. Um, a conditional statement is just like an if-then statement. It's converse is when you flip the order. Uh, the inverse is when it's not, so it's just not P, not Q. Um, and then the contrapositive is like a double negative. You switch the order and say the say not. Um, the one thing I didn't really go over too much is this idea of truth connections. Now, the conditional is always the same in terms of whether it's true or false in relationship to the contrapositive. And the reason being is it's that double negative idea. When you say, like, I'm not not going to do something, it means you are going to do it. So the conditional, so the if-then statement is the same thing as the if not Q, if not P statement. It's actually the same meaning, so it has the same truth value. Um, meanwhile, the converse and the inverse are also have the same truth value. So the converse um, is it, just like the conditional is like contrapositive is the double negative of the conditional. The inverse is kind of like a double negative of the converse. So these two are related in, in terms of truth, and these two are related. Um, now, if all of them are true, so if it's like the same forwards and backwards and everything, then it's called biconditional, um, and that's that happens again when all are true. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at three different uh, statements, um, and we're going to determine which ones are what what's true and what's false in terms of the the statement, the converse, the inverse, and so forth. All right. So um, what we're going to do, the way I'm going to do this is to make a truth table. Um, this is kind of a good way to visualize what it's saying and um, whether it's true or false. So first we're going to look at the first statement. It says, if a person is tired, then they go to sleep. So I'm going to say my P, I, I like to do these problems just by saying P then Q. So in this case, my P is, my first thing would be, if a person is tired, so if we're tired, um, then they go to sleep. So Q would be they sleep. Okay, so is that true? If you're tired, do you always go to sleep? Um, I'm actually a little tired right now, but I'm not sleeping. So I proved a non-example. So I would call that false. All right, so immediately we know one thing else is also going to be false, and that is the contrapositive. Because again, these always have the same truth value. All right, so now I'm going to do the converse. The converse is where you flip it around. It says, if you go to sleep, then you are tired. So in this case, it would be sleep, then tired. All right, um, that one's a questionable one of whether or not, if you're sleeping, are you in fact tired? Um, I would probably say not, because if you're sleeping, you're getting well rested. So I would probably say that that's false as well. Uh, the inverse is where you take the original statement and you just say not. So if you're not tired, then you are not sleeping. Again, that's not always true, so that's also false. Um, I, there's been many times that I have not been tired, but I still had to go to sleep. So. Uh, the contrapositive is the double negative, so that would be you're not sleeping. If you're not sleeping, then you are um, not tired. And again, the way the easiest way to tell the truth on that, because the double negatives are confusing, um, just know that it's going to match whatever the statement was. Right. So that would be our first truth table. Now we're going to move on to the second statement. The second uh, statement is: if a figure is a square, then it is a regular quadrilateral. So you need to know the word regular and quadrilateral. Regular means all sides and angles are equal. And a quadrilateral means it's four, it's four-sided. So by definition, that this actually is the definition of a square. Okay. So it's saying the statement is um, our p basically is that we have a square. So if you have a square, then that means you are a regular quadrilateral. Again, that is the definition of a square. So that is most definitely true. You immediately know that if the statement is true, so is the double negative, so the contrapositive. So that is also true, because those two are related. The converse uh, would be where you flip it around. It says if you are a regular quadrilateral, then you would also be a square. OK? 
Okay, that is by definition a regular four-sided figure. A four-sided figure with all equal sides and angles is a square. So that is true. So if that is true, then so is the inverse. The inverse is also true. So we know that all four of these are going to be true um, by their relationships. This to this and this to this. All right. Now in the case where all four are true, recognize that this is going to be a biconditional statement. So this is biconditional. The way you write a biconditional statement is where you use like an if and only if phrase. But understand that this, because the statement is true um, in all four cases, that, that has to be a biconditional. All right, now I'm not going to go fill in the rest of the table. The key was that you understood the truths. So the inverse would be if you are not a square, you're not a regular quadrilateral. And the contrapositive would be, if you're not a regular quadrilateral, then you are not a square. And again, all those we've already proved are true. All right, so now our final statement is, if you go into a pool, then you will get wet. Okay, so our statement was, if you go into a pool, then you get wet. Um, again, I think that's pretty true. If you go into a pool, obviously there's moisture in the pool, you're going to somehow get wet. So that is most definitely true. Okay. Now, if we know the statement's true, our contrapositive is true. That's the, if you're not wet, then you're not in a pool. Okay. Uh, now, the converse would be, if you are wet, then you went into a pool. All right. You can get wet other ways rather than just going into a pool. I could have gotten wet because I went into a shower. Okay. So this is obviously false. In this case, if the converse is false, so is the inverse. The inverse is also false. All right? um, and that is basically how logical statements are connected in terms of true and false. Okay?